you said publicly that you believe waterboarding is inconsistent with American values. It's something that should be prohibited. It goes beyond the bounds of what a civilized society should employ. My question is this. In your opinion, does waterboarding constitute torture? Uh, the Attorney General has referred to waterboarding as torture. Many people have referred to it as torture. Attorney General, uh, Premier, sort of, uh, law enforcement officer and lawyer of this country. Uh, and as you well know, and as we've had the discussion, Senator, uh, the term torture has a lot of legal and political implications. It is something that should have been banned uh, long ago. It never should have taken place, in my view. Uh, and therefore, it is, if I were to go to CIA, it would never, in fact, be uh, brought back. Do you, have an, uh, do you have a personal opinion as to whether waterboarding is torture? I have a personal opinion that waterboarding is reprehensible and it's something that should not be done. And again, I am not a lawyer, Senator, and I can't uh, address that question. Well, you've read opinions as to whether or not waterboarding is torture. And I'm just saying, do you accept yeah. those opinions of the Attorney General? That's my question. Well, Senator, you know, I, I've read a lot of legal opinions. I read an Office of Legal Counsel opinion in the previous administration that said, in fact, waterboarding could be used. So from the standpoint of, of that, you know, I cannot point to a single legal document on this issue. But as far as I'm concerned, waterboarding is something that never should have been employed and and. As far as I'm concerned, never will be if I have anything to do with it. Is waterboarding banned by the Geneva Conventions? I believe the Attorney General also has said that it's contrary and contravention of the Geneva Convention. Again, I am not a lawyer or a legal scholar to make a determination about what is in violation of an international convention. Mr. Rodriguez, the former CIA Deputy Director for Operations, was asked about his personal, moral, or ethical perspective on these enhanced interrogation techniques, including waterboarding. He said that um, he knew of, and these are his words, I know that many of these procedures were applied to our own servicemen. Tens of thousands of U.S. soldiers had gone through this, close quote. Now, as we investigated at the Senate Armed Services Committee in our 2008 report, these so-called survival, evasion, resistance, or, and escape, or SEER techniques referred to by Mr. Rodriguez, were used to train members of our military. They were never intended to be used by U.S. interrogators. These techniques were based on Chinese Communist interrogation techniques used during the Korean War to elicit confessions, were developed to expose U.S. and, and the use or the, uh, the training of U.S. personnel and exposing of them for a few moments to these techniques was helped to, was meant to help them survive the event they were captured and the event they were subjected to these techniques. My question to you is this. Is there any comparability between a friendly trainer in the United States exposing our troops to abuses, these SEER techniques, including waterboarding, for a few moments under close supervision? Is there any possible comparability to that, to using these techniques on an enemy in an effort to extract intelligence. They are for completely different purposes and intentions. I do not see any comparability there. Now, the chairman and I issued a report on, or made a statement on April 27, 2012. This also um, began with the statement of Mr. Rodriguez. And here's what he said. Information provided by CIA detainees Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Abu Faraj al Libby about bin Laden's courier being the lead information that eventually led to the location of bin Laden's compound and the operation that led to his death. That's what Rodriguez said. We said that statement is wrong. The original lead information had no connection to CIA detainees. The CIA had significant intelligence on the courier that was collected from a variety of classified sources. While the CIA's enhanced interrogation techniques were used against KSM and Al Libby, the pair provided false and misleading information during their time in CIA custody. Now, my question to you is, are you aware of any intelligence information that supports Mr. Rodriguez's claim that the lead information on the courier came from KSM and Al Libby? I have not reviewed the intelligence um, thoroughly, but I am unaware of any. Next. Michael Hayden, on May 3, 2011, former CIA director, said that, quote, what we got, the original lead information, 
began with information from CIA detainees at black sites. Chairman, uh, the chairman and I issued in the same statement um, the following, that, uh, is, that the statement of uh, the former Attorney General Michael Mukasey was wrong. Do you have any information to disagree with our statement? I do not. A third statement that we quoted in our report, that of Michael Hayden, former CIA director. But we got the original lead information, began with information, excuse me, that was Mr. Hayden that I was asking about, not Mr. Bacchese. Your answer is the same, I assume. Yeah, I do not know. I, I am unaware. You don't have any information to the contrary. Right. Michael Mukasey. Uh, former Attorney General, Wall Street Journal. Consider how the intelligence that led to bin Laden came to hand. It began with a disclosure from colleague Sheikh Mohammed, who broke like a dam under pressure of harsh interrogation techniques that included waterboarding. He loosed a torrent of information, including eventually the name, the name of a trusted courier of bin Laden. Our statement, that of the chairman and myself, is that that statement is wrong. Do you have any information to the contrary? Senator, uh, my impression earlier on was that there was information that was provided that was useful and valuable. But as I said, I've read now the first volume of your report, which raises questions about whether any of that information was accurate. But I, I'm now referring not to the report, but the statement that Chairman Feinstein and I issued on April 27, 2012. We flat out say that those statements are wrong. Right. Do you have any basis to disagree with us? I, I do not. Will you, when you become CIA director, assuming you're confirmed, take the statement that we have issued and tell us whether or not you disagree with any of the statements that we have made about those statements of those three men? Will you do that if you're confirmed? I, I, will, I will look and consider that request, Senator. As I said, um, the report that this committee has put together, I need to take a look at what CIA's response is to it. Uh, and that report raises serious questions about whether any uh, worthwhile intelligence came from these individuals. Will you include in your review a review of our joint statement and tell us whether after your review you disagree with anything that we've said. Will you do that? I will be happy to.